It is 4 p.m. We're bringing you the developing news. And the stories behind the headlines. This is StoryCon. I'm Patrick Pius. And I'm Ed Lingao. Some stories we're watching this Monday, April 1. President Bongo Marcos has signed Executive Order Number 57, which renames and reorganizes the National Coast Watch Council as the National Maritime Council. The NMC is tasked to formulate policies and strategies to strengthen maritime security and domain awareness among Filipinos. It will be charged by executive or chaired by Executive Secretary Lucas Barsamin. Four areas in the country are forecast to reach dangerous heat index levels today, April 1. These are Apari in Cagayan, Katarman, Northern Samar, Pili, Camarines Sur, and Zamwanga City. Pagasa classifies the 42 to 51 degrees Celsius heat index as dangerous. The, these temperatures can cause heat cramps and exhaustion, and prolonged, uh, prolonged exposure could lead to the graver, uh, graver heat stroke. And Police Major General Romel Francisco Marbil has been appointed new chief of the PNP. Marbil succeeds General Benjamin Acorda, or sorry, Benjamin Acorda Jr., who retired on March 31. Before this, Lieutenant General Emmanuel Peralta was designated as the PNP's officer in charge for a week. And joining us this afternoon, Ana Marie Pamintuan, the editor-in-chief of the Philippine Star, and of course, Manuel Mogato, Tito Mani Mogs, our One News Defense Editor. Welcome back to StoryCon, Ami and Mogs. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Happy Belate, Easter. Belated happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we, we have our security editor here, Manny Mogato, for two reasons, I know, two stories in our headlines. First is the development on the West Philippine Sea. Uh, this administration seems to be taking a specific direction, a new direction. If it's new, we'll, let's find out, Manny. And also, the appointment of a new PNP director general. Okay, but first, Ami, what's anong naka layout sa front pages ng Philippine Star? Well, apart from yung mga nabanggit nyo mga stories, binabantayan namin kung ilan pang schools nag nagsususpindi mga on-site oh. classes no, across, well, many areas na in the Visayas especially and parts of Mindanao dahil sa sobrang init. Napaka-init. Kahit daw, even in Metro Manila, kahit daw yung mga electric fan, hindi makaya kasi syempre, nagsisirculate yung, ano, eh, yung, yung mainit na hangin eh. Kaya ganon. Kaya titignan natin kung ano magiging impact na ng deliberations, di ba? To return na nga, bilis-bilisan yung pagbalik sa yung original class schedule natin na bakasyon ng mga bata kapag uh, summer. Oh, pag June ang yeah, pasukan. But apart from that, yun nga, nabanggit nyo na iba eh. So it's a choice, ano, no, Bok, Mani, uh, Bok, mm. Ami, and ano, ano, Mani, na mm. between uh, pasukan sa tag-init o pas pasukan mm. sa tag-baha. <laughs> in either case, I know it, it results sometimes in class suspensions, right? So, hindi, kahit naman ang sabi naman ng iba, syempre yung bakasyon hindi lang naman yan dahil sa init, kundi rest din yan yung nasabi naman ng mga teacher. Mm -hmm. Syempre yung one time na, na maganda weather, makapagbakasyon ka for mental health reasons, at saka talaga makapag fully relax. Eh, hindi mo naman daw kayang mm -hmm. gawin yon. Kapag bumabagyo, hindi ka makalabas. Oo, oh, yun lang. Saka yung mga tourist, natin tourist mga, no? establishments natin, yun din na sinasabi. Oh, okay. Siyempre, iniintay din nila yung mga estudyante. Oh, itong dalawang may edad sa atin dito, tanong natin sila. Uh, kayo ba? <laughs> <laughs> kayo bang dalawa? Eh? Easy ka sa tinuturo mo. <laughs> <laughs> na, Naranasan yun nung nakaraan? Sama ka na doon, Ed. <laughs> nung inyong kabataan na nagsuspend ng klase dahil mainit? Wala, 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 wala. Well, wala. May, maybe because ang summer natin, pag ganitong panahon, talagang bakasyon. Yes. I think you forgot that. That's true. <laughs> 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 bakasyon, talagang bakasyon. Pag bakasyon sinabi talaga. bakasyon, it's summer, you go to the beach. Yeah, no, no, beach. At kung baka ka bagyo dahil malamig dun. Mm -hmm. Kaya ganun talaga. Eh ngayon, wala ka naman sabihin mo, bakasyon ako, bagyo. Nandun ka lang sa bahay, yun, hindi bakasyon niya. <laughs> Alungod-lungod naman, no? <laughs> Naka, so, Nakakadepress. Hindi maganda para sa mental health ng mga teachers, di ba? Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and the children, lalo na yung mga bata, di ba? Umaasa yan na siyempre. Eh, gusto ko maglaro, siyempre, kung bakasyon. Oh, right, right. Oh. Ano mo si Manny, baka nung panahon niya, kung ano ginagawa nung oh, <laughs> Manny, nung panahon ng hapon. Apo, <laughs> yung panahon din, Ed. <laughs> bakasyon din. 
Okay. So, Ami, <laughs> Ami, the big story talaga is really the weather. This heat that we're all experiencing. Lalo na ngayon, kakapasok lang niya. Ito, no? Dalawang ba, dalawang, dalawang bote yan. Kanina ng ano. Isang ng, soft drinks. Uh, isang yeah. soft drinks. Yeah. Dal, I, 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 I remember yung heat niya, na yan, may impact yan sa ano natin, agricultural production. Right. Diba? We're also watching the drought. We're also watching okay, the drought. Natin, at saka yung water supply natin, may warning na na magkakaroon na naman ng rotational water service, especially in Metro Manila. So, iniintay din natin yan, yung mga developments dyan. Okay, but because of this heat. But, but ano, no? I mean, no, curiously, Bok, uh, Manny, curiously, Cebu City has declared an ano, state of calamity. <laughs> It's a city. Yes. No? They're saying water it's crisis. affected their their water resources. But we all know at the same time, no, when you declare a calamity, a state of calamity, ang kasunod yan is may pondong bibigay sa yung national government. Mm. Mm. Para so I, I just wonder yung, ano, para yung saan ang pondo. Mababawasan yung, well, let's call it red tape. Red tape talaga yun. Eh. Mm -hmm. O baka binabawasan nila yung processes. Kapag sinabi mo, emergency na kami, kailangan na namin ang tubig. Mm. Ang problema lang, wala ka na mapagkunan ng tubig. So itong calamity pa na ito, buk pabili ng bottled water sa Cebu. <laughs> <laughs> Pero yung, yung, ano, yung heat index ito, hindi naman sa Pilipinas eh. Global to eh. Naramdam hmm. yung sobrang yeah. init. Sa hmm. ibang pansa, nainitan din sila eh. Sobra, lalo sa Amerika. Okay. Okay. Hindi sila sanay sa init eh. Oh. Bok, Bok, teka. Kaya, uh, uh, Ami, Mogs, yung guest natin eh nagmamadali. Ipasok natin siguro. Ah, siya. Ha? Si, uh, okay. Oh, si uh, well, our geopolitical analyst, uh, Richard Hidarian, Professor Hidarian, okay. is uh, joining us now. Sir. Mm. Kamusta, kamusta guys? Narinig niyo ako, nasa taxi ako ngayon eh. No? <laughs> oh, eto, pa pabakasyon to. Bukang pabakasyon <laughs> ka, Richard. Alam mo, madali. Pabakasyon ako. Yeah. Okay. Sige, Richard. Lagare, lagare. Ano to, Richard? Bus lang o eroplano sasakyan mo? And wh where are you headed? Well, you don't have to tell yeah, us, pero... I, I, I'm going back to Manila from Baguio, and then I'll Yo. fly out of the country, mamaya. Uh -oh. Yo. Ba? Ba? Baguio, Manila, out of the country? Lagari talaga. Jet, jet setter. Kaya, oh, kaya yeah. geopolitical jet analyst jet siya, kasi kung san-san lupalop ng daigdig na pupunta yung <laughs> si Richard. So, so may talk tayo sa East Coast and West Coast in the, in the next two weeks, tapos balik tayo ng... Okay, kasi, let's, kasi, let's, let's... Alam niya na yan. Let's jump in, Richard, to, to our question, ano? Yeah. This recent pronouncement by Malacanang, by the president himself, ano? Uh, uh, you know, um, Holy Week, and he issues this statement, which seems, at least from where I'm looking at it, as a departure from a previous statement, where he said we should lower down, we should lower the rhetoric. But in this last statement by the president, he's saying he's admitting that he has called the allies, and he has... Uh, Asked them for, I don't know, I told them that we need this and that. And then um, the allies have uh, responded favorably. Kumbaga, right. this is not lowering the rhetoric. So uh, what, what, what do you see happening? Well, I think the president is just uh, recalibrating his position. Because no? mm -hmm. uh, I think what he's saying here is the good cop, bad cop style, where he's going to be the DND secretary, going to be the Philippine Coast Guard, and then... Mm -hmm. Tapos siya, malum, malumana, uh, it, it looks like that didn't work, right? I think that's his understanding mm -hmm. because over the past six months, we had at least three incidents where China used water cannons. And itong latest incident ay nakakabala kasi multiple Filipino servicemen were injured. At uh, the way, the optics was also not that good. I mean, to be honest, I think that in the previous incidents, may pagka David and Goliath ang dating eh. But in this incident, Parang medyo pinakawawa na tayo, di ba? No, we, we kind of look helpless. And uh, the fact that this just came a uh, few days after uh, uh, Secretary Blinken's visit and the U.S. Open is saying they're going to stay with the Philippines with an ironclad commitment, I think both the Philippines and the uh, both the Philippines and U.S. felt the pressure to say something big. So you have President Marcos saying we're not going to yield and we're going to get maximum uh, support from our allies. And then you had the head of the U.S. Pacific Command, General, uh, com uh, sorry, Commander Aquilino, also openly saying that he's really worried about something bad happening. But let's be very clear: both of them are are saying that America is China. It's China that is ex escalating the situation, not the Philippines. So I think, as much as na kabahale itong direction of what's happening, we also not we shouldn't gaslight ourselves, right? Because we are the receiving end of China's aggressive actions here. But China's been saying China. in the past uh, the past week that uh, we 
violated daw our own uh, agreement uh, with China. Well, uh, it was supposed to be a gentleman's agreement between President De Gong <laughs> and the Chinese not to reinforce uh, the Sierra Madre. Uh, so where, where, where does that come in? Well, I mean, uh, our efforts at fortifying a position in the Sierra Madre has been going on for quite some time because I think anyone who knows a thing or two about the facts on the ground uh, is this. Yung BRP Sierra Madre natin, uh, buwibigay na yan eh. I mean, if, if mm. that was not fortified years earlier, not only this year, uh, wala na yan. Uh, Bibigay na yan. So it's gonna give in to the elements. Uh, so we had no choice but to fortify it. Therefore, right, if, if totoo na may agreement na status quo, that was the status quo kung saan Philippines yung losing party. Because in a situation where the Philippines doesn't do anything, that only allows China... <laughs> to have the initiative to occupy the okay. Iowa show, just like how they did it. So, so that's why I'm still wondering if Cayetano or any other uh, uh, top officials from the previous administration are going to give us more details about it. I'm still wondering about whether there'll be a hearing or proper investigation here, because so far it's just mm. Harry Roque that okay. I know has openly come out and talked about it. And remember, this is a gentleman's agreement. It's non-binding. Okay, Richard, I just want to go back to what you said earlier. You, you mentioned the word recalibrating. Mm -hmm. The president is recalibrating his position. You've also mentioned that the AFP and the uh, and Philippine Coast Guard have maintained a very aggressive, well, it's not called aggressive stand, but they're more, they're more of the pushback assertive. position. Assertive, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned recalibrating. Does this mean that there's no more balancing act for, for this administration? Uh, we're just really swinging to one side. Um, well, there's definitely that risk that we might over uh, calibrate in a sense that we pivot all the way towards the United States, double down on ESCA, and mm -hmm. escalate the situation, hoping that China will back down. But that would be a very uh, risky uh, move for the Philippines. I think reasonably what the Philippines can do is a two-track approach whereby behind the scenes, quietly, diplomatically, we reach out to China and say, hey, this is the reality of Marcos' administration. This is not the gong. It's, it's not politically feasible for any Filipino president to oversee the loss of yet another land feature. We already effectively lost our partial uh, in the past, and now we cannot lose Zayung in Shul. If we don't fortify Sherman, that's what's going to happen. But at the same time, I think the Philippines also has other options. For instance, we can use other vessels. Uh, we can have more Filipino warships or Coast Guard vessels uh, essentially uh, protecting our supply lines, Jan Jan Payung and Shoals. So it's not like we are we have fully utilized what we already have. Kasi siguro maaga pa napag-usapan yung America eh. But there is still the option for the Philippines to have joint patrols and, and even joint resupply missions in the area. But I think that's a little bit of a nuclear option na yan eh. So before going there, I think there's still a number of options that Philippines can do. A kind of a two-track approach, diplomacy behind the scenes, talking nicer behind the scenes, and then at the same time consider using more capable and robust Filipino vessels, uh, if not warships, to do our resupply than Zayung in short. Okay, you mentioned a two-track approach, you know, but we seem to be not seeing that other track, meaning to say diplomacy between Manila and Beijing. Uh, or is there something we don't know that's going on? I'm 100% sure behind the scenes there are a lot of conversations. You know, this is not the first time that China is having tussles with other neighboring countries. Uh, aside from Vietnam, with which they have had, you know, a thousand years of tussles. You know, Malaysia two, three years ago was in a very dangerous situation. Uh, Malaysia unilaterally developed oil and gas resources in areas claimed by both Vietnam and China. There was really a threat of a three-way conflict. So behind the scenes, there was a lot of conversation. Um, and then also uh, Indonesia, uh, you know, Jokowi went to Natuna area, scrambled F-16 fighters to push back against China. But behind the scenes, there was a lot of conversation. So I think it's, it's, it's possible to also okay. talk talk yes, and yes. draw the line uh, right. in public, but behind the scenes have some serious, it's, it's, sincere and more deliberate conversations. Richard, it's good that you mentioned uh, Malaysia and Indonesia, but I think our problem is, or is this the problem, or maybe it's not the problem, that doesn't our military alliance with the U.S. It's precisely the bone of contention here. Uh, doesn't it complicate yeah, things for us? Right. The, the, the U.S. alliance it could cut both ways, right? Uh, if we over-rely on the U.S., that definitely has its costs. And it, it, it definitely is going to hurt the Chinese more. 
For instance, if we give Americans more basing access in Cagayan, Isabela, Ilocos Sur, Norte, I don't know, Batanes, obviously that's going to be an extra point of tension with China. But at the same time, let's not forget one reason China is using water cannons rather than real cannons is not because they're scared of us. It's because they're in fear that the U.S. will be involved. So it's not like useless at all alliance. So if anything, it has a latent deterrence effect. So it's also about how you calibrate that alliance in our favor. But my contention is this. We are paying the price of subservience during the Duterte era. Because the, both the Malaysian and the Indonesian situations I mentioned, this happened during the Duterte time. Both Jokowi mm-hmm. and the former prime ministers of Malaysia, from Mahathir all, all the way to before the current uh, prime minister and war, they all stood up to China until they cut China's respect. Uh, what happened under Duterte is that we spoiled China. We gave China the impression that because they're good friends with our president, or if not more, then uh, they're going to have their way. And now they're, they're scrambling because they're wondering what's happening with the Philippines. Well, we're seeing what uh, any sovereign self-respecting country should do right now. So I think we're paying the price for not only the supposed gentleman's agreement, but also for six years of subservience that made China think they can get away with anything and impose their will. So, unfortunately, catch up time with the Filipinas. Okay. Richard, going back to Patrick's original question, do you actually see, considering what President Marcos has said in recent days, are you actually seeing any shift, any significant shift in his policy on the West Philippine Sea, or is it just rhetoric? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, as I said, the, the, you cannot separate anymore the West Philippine Sea from the So, the Taiwan... The Taiwan right now is integral part of the West Philippine Sea issue because the Chinese are not only in Taiwan, not only in terms of our own uh, uh, facilities there, but also in terms of ETCA, uh, in terms of what the U.S. is doing in the north of the Philippines. So as I said, always, this also cuts both ways. We overdo it and we get over-involved in the Taiwan issue to risk having backlash from China in the West Philippine Sea. But if we we use that leverage point, perhaps to the American presence in the north, then maybe we can get concessions from China in the West Philippine Sea. I know many people disagree with me, but honestly, I feel that's the best way out of our conundrum. Because parang game of chicken ang yarangene. Both of us are escalating, seeing who will blink first. But but this is this is going to be more and more dangerous by the day. Ang sabi ng iba, Richard, that we are provoking. China, we are provoking China to act in a way that we can draw in the U.S. through the Mutual Defense Treaty. Do you share that observation? No, no, no I think that's gaslighting. I think that's definitely strategic gaslighting. I mean, China, did they have to use those water cannons that are almost lethal, that injured our servicemen? They could have used them, you know, they have a huge fleet there. They could have used less uh, aggressive means uh, to, to, to get their way over they could just accept the fact that the Philippines is not going to give up Ayong and Shoal after they got the score partial from us effectively. So, so no, no, I think the ball is definitely in China's court. But that doesn't mean we should also mindlessly contribute to the escalation of the situation. That's why I, I think the strategy of the BPN administration is correct. My worry is tactics. If we get the tactics wrong, we overdo joint patrols with the U.S. We overdo the ESCA vis-a-vis Taiwan, right? We overdo the rhetoric. Those are my worries. If we overdo some of these topics, the strategy will suffer. Okay. So are you still there? Or uh, I think we're losing you a bit. Uh, are you already at the yeah. station? Uh, I think we lost him. Sir, are you still there? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. I just like to point out, uh, no, no, Boko, no. We we mentioned that status quo gentleman's agreement mm. uh, between uh, the Duterte administration and Coating China. Harry Roque, yeah, quoting Harry Roque. Uh, may 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 na uh, may na dig up tayo mani dito an article when you were still with Reuters in August 16, 2017, uh, and the headline says. Uh, Philippines says China agrees on no new expansion in South China Sea. Okay? It's an article written by you, Manny. <laughs> so, China has assured the Philippines it will not occupy new f- features or territory in the South China Sea under a new status quo brokered by Manila as both sides try to strengthen their relations. 
uh, the Philippine Defense Minister said. This is, so this is a report co quoting ano, uh, former Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana. So it was not so secret after all. It's been But, but it's I guess it depends kasi on exactly how you define status quo. Eh. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, status quo can mean no new... Okay, that's uh, another matter. Uh, but as far no as the new islands versus as, so would you bring in more ships or more airplanes to their existing yeah. islands? Yeah, pero, pero as far as this agreement is concerned, this gentleman's agreement is concerned, it's not very secret. It has been published and it's out in the open. It's been acknowledged by the former defense secretary in a hearing with the House of Representatives, and it's an article by Reuters on August 16, 2017, written by you, Manny. Yon. Alam niyo ako so, sa, as, early as, as early as 2002, may agreement na yung China at ang ASEAN na no new occupation, no new construction mm -hmm. doon sa South China Sea that is under the Declaration of Conduct of Parties in the West mm -hmm. in the South China Sea, in DOC. No? <laughs> It's an informal code of conduct. So, maski wala yung gentleman's agreement, the Philippines has been observing that no new construction, no new occupation. Okay. Pero ang ginagawa natin, hindi man construction, kundi which, repair. Which brings us to Ed's point, right? What does status yeah. quo mean? Mm. Status quo means no new, walang bago. Pero as far as China is concerned, I think they, they're, they're looking at repairs as a violation of that agreement. But uh, they've been uh, building more structures in their occupied the time. Yes, the same uh, time. they haven't stopped. They're they reclaiming actually uh, stopped. Uh, land. Diba? So it, it depends on how island. you want to interpret ano, yung status quo and Pero no money, new construction. Pero Manny, Manny, sabi mo 2002 pa yan? <laughs> Declaration <laughs> of conduct? Pero, uh, may, may, ano, may oh, eh. agreement yung ASEAN at China. DOC. Eh, halos lahat ng mga artificial island dyan were constructed after yeah. 2002. 2012, ano, 2013, uh, Kaya nga. So, they can actually oh. do whatever they want. Kaya yes, nga eh. Ano, anong magagawa dyan? Also, if you... Uh, if, lugar, oh. But also, Bok, if you, if you <laughs> try to apply the same standards on China that they try to apply to the Philippines, then uh, China should not be undertaking any sort of construction exactly. or repair in the yes. artificial island. Oh. Or new installation. Uh, uh, yung, ano, yung, uh, has yung China... Has chi mm -hmm. China has promised na para lang sa peace element to, pwede nga kayo rito. Yan nga. Eh, ngayon, naging exactly. like, military base na. Yeah, Alam if yun. you can dig up the video, yung, ano, yung mga hot lang yan noon eh. Mm -hmm. Ilang mm -hmm. hot lang daw yan na for the fishermen, pati daw fishermen natin, pwede mag-shelter doon. So, Tingnan mo ngayon, naging ano na siya. Naging, naging land feature na siya. Oh, oh, talagang so, tinabuna na yun. Tinabuna. China is, ano, violating also the, ano, agreement. Oh. But you use so, the word also. Ayan, mapapan. <coughs> so, Manny, there have been structures. Hindi man na sobrang kasi kanya-kanyang ano yan eh. Okay. So, Manny, do we know that there have been structures uh, in any of those uh, parts of uh, West Philippine Sea, uh, new structures established by China after after this 2017 gentleman's agreement. Wala, uh, kasi ang ang mga structures ng China ginawayan dun sa occupied features na nila yung pito, no? Mm -hmm. Pero walang walang bagong occupation. Kaya kaya nga yung Scarborough Shoal hindi na tinatayuan kasi bawal yan under the uh, 2002 mm. DOC agreement. Pero Bok, you're referring to new occupation eh. Uh, hmm. I think the question oh, is... Kaya nga walang, kaya yeah. nga hindi sila lang tayo sa yeah. Scarborough. Uh, no, I, I think the question is, ano eh, um, uh, may, may bago bang um, reinforcement, construction in the existing occupied island? Right. Oh, uh, yung existing, okay lang na mag-improve ka, improve, hindi, ano, so, hindi yung bagong construction. So, no? it, okay, improve. So, China has been doing improvements in existing structures after yes. 2017. Let's at least talk about 2017, Mani, no? Of course, there's a yes. 2005 agreement also with the rest of ASEAN. Pero since everybody's referring to 2017, no, let's let's take China's no, argument, no? There have been improvements on their facilities post-2017. Yes. Yes. Marami, marami. Hindi naman China nagre-reclaim, eh. Pati Vietnam, pati Malaysia nagre-reclaim, no? 
yung Taiwan, yung Gaelic name din. Pero hindi ganun kasing laki nung China na isla talaga yung ginawa. No, And then, pagkakaiba China. naman dyan, Ma Manny, ang China and Vietnam, they, they really share common waters. Eh. Mm. Kaya mahirap-hirap yung, medyo komplikado yung pinag-aawayan nilang yan. Pag tinignan mo, talagang meron sila mga nag-overlap na EEC. And uh, Taiwan, Taiwan as well. Pero tayo, tingnan nyo naman yung mapa, layo-layo niyan. Layo. Sobrang layo niyan. Unless, unless totoo na meron silang landmass dati na nakakonekta sa atin, <laughs> eh kailangan hukayin mo yung buong dagat, ano, para makita mo. Kailangan mag-part ka dyan, la, eh, parang ano yan, yung kemosis yan, kailangan buksan mo. <laughs> kailangan buksan mo yan para makita mo yan. But otherwise, wala ka, ah, ang layo naman yung EEC na yan. It's, uh, ano sila eh, 1,000 kilometers ang layo nila, miles. From, uh, Kaya nga. Chinese shores, no? Yung ayungin. Tayo, ano lang, 120? Kaya nga. Kaya nga. Oh, kaya nga. Oh. oh kaya. Diba? Uh, talagang... Eh, eh, yung panganiban, dyan, binanggit mo. Yung panganiban, it's covered by the arbitral ruling. Specifically. Yes, oh. Kasama yan. Na we have sovereign rights over panganiban. Eh, hanggang ngayon, ano? Saka sabi mo, payag sila kung improvement. Pag pininturahan ba natin yung BRP Sierra Madre, improvement ba yun? Inaharang nila yun? yun. No, improvement yun. Kasi nandun na yun eh. Hindi improvement yun, survival yun eh. Oh. The paint will keep it together. Antiras na, anti na pintura, improvement ba yun? Okay, Manny, on another yun, matter, no? Eh. Manny? Yung Manny. bawal lang, yung tatayawin mo ng bago. Kunyari, maglalaki ka ng bagong parko doon. Yun, bawal yun. Okay. Manny, oh. on another matter, uh, alam ba natin how significant or what's the significance of this, the creation of a National Maritime Council? Uh, it, it's supposedly a, a spin-off from the old National Coast Watch Council uh, uh, that is under the office of the National President. National Coast, Coast Watch Council, okay. ano yan, under the Coast Guard lang. So, mm -hmm. ang ibig sabihin niyan, nagtatayo ng mga radar station yung Coast Guard para i-monitor yung movement ng ships na dumadaan doon sa ating uh, EEC. No? Uh, kasi, alam mo, yung sa uh, pagpapasok ka sa may Visayas at sa, ano, sa, yan, sa Cebu no? at sa Mindoro, eh, merong international passes dyan. So, dapat binabantihan mo kung ano ginagawa nung uh, dumadaang barko. So, kaya, okay. kaya yung Coast Guard, merong talagang mga coastal radar station. Okay. No? Ang alam ko, may higit 20 na yan eh. Pero that project started in 2004 by the US government. No? Naglagay sila ng Coast Watch Station sa Mindanao para daw bantayan yung mga Abu Sayyaf na tumatawid. No? Sa Sulu, puntang Sabah, no? o kaya sa Indonesia. Pero dumami na nga yan, kaya parang Coast Guard lang yung nagbabantay dyan. Pero ngayon, under the National Maritime uh, Council, i-expand ni Pangulong Marcos no, to involve other uh, government agencies na bantayan yung buong uh, karagatan ng Pilipinas. Di lang yung inner, kundi pati sa West Philippine Sea. Mm -hmm. no? so, so I'm so, looking at the, no, the composition money. They, they, money. they will uh, create uh, a bigger force. Okay, Manny, I'm looking at the composition. It now includes practically everybody in the cabinet, the cabinet. that's that's uh, not connected with uh, security and defense and economic. The economy. Parang NTFL pa yan. Oo. Oh, uh, kasama dito si Defense Secretary Teodoro, si Agriculture Secretary Herman Francisco Chura Laurel, Energy Secretary Lutilia, hanggang dito kay ano, sa Solicitor General Menardo Guevara. So, it's almost a... Uh, what they would call a whole of government approach so yes. uh, what are what what is the uh, marcos administration uh, trying to tell us it, it's a holistic approach na bantayan yung ating karagatan kasi may involve din yung ano no yung mga uh, environment and uh, resources like fisheries no kaya may ano din eh kaya may DA no kaya may department of energy kasi may Uh, energy resources dyan sa kalagatan. So, babantayan yan at uh, i-harness no? uh, yung pwede nating makuwang uh, resources 
dyan sa within our EEZ. No? So parang binalawak lang ni Pangulong Marcos yung scope ng dating uh, National Coast Watch na dati ang ginagawa lang ibantayan yung movement ng mga barko. Ngayon, eh, pwede nang bantayan yung buong karagatan at uh, tignan yung resources na pwede nang timakuha dyan sa uh, West Philippine Sea at sa iba pang lugar ng ating Pilipinas. No? Yung bilang sa West Philippine Sea at pati sa Norte, uh, pati sa South at pati sa East. No? So, buong ano yan, buong karagatan ng Pilipinas ang involved dyan sa National Maritime uh, Council. Oo, oh, itong National Watch, Coast Watch Council, Manny, if you will, ano, I think ang dating head nito was... Coast Guard? Uh, no, uh, it's um, this guy. So, si Edmund Tayaw. Yun, si Edmund Tayaw, <laughs> ah, si Professor oh. Edmund Tayaw. Yes. Okay. Siya, siya yung dating head niya, National Coast Watch Council. Oh, oh. Right? Panahon oh. ni Digong. No, panahon nata ni BBM, Manny. Ah, oh, yung simula. Simula. Oo, oh, oh. napalit, napalitan din. Well, uh, now, eh, medyo Sintino. pinalitan yung buong organization. Pero mm -hmm. in practical and real terms, what, what does this, uh, this uh, mean, itong creation ng Maritime Council? Uh, uh, in terms of, uh, okay, uh, for one, formulating policies and secondly, enforcing or implementing policies. In real terms, ano, anong mangyari, uh, what will happen in oh, here? Yun, yun din ang tanong ko eh. Lalakas ba capability natin na pigilan yung mga pagbobomba sa atin, for example, ng China, ng tubig? Ay, kasi, yung kasama bang, yun, sa, yun ang tinatanong lang ng mga natao. Kasi kasama sa EEO, no, natatanggap yung Pilipinas ng mga tulong sa, at, sa ibang bansa para palakasin yung ating Coast Guard, no? at ang ating Navy. In fact, yung Australia ay nangako ng dalawang barko, yung Guardian Class sa uh, patrol boat, no? Na ito ay eh, binibigyan nila under the Maritime Security Initiative, no? Ang binibigyan nila dito yung mga Pacific countries, yung mga Palau, Vanuatu, Fiji hmm. Island, uh, binibigyan nila ng uh, barko. Ngayon, kasama na tayo, may dalawang ibibigay daw sa Philippine Coast Guard. No? So, okay. Since At, uh, yung yung uh, Japan, eh, nangako din na uh, gagawa ng mas malaking barko, no? tulad ng Teresa Magbanwa, para sa Philippine Coast Guard. So, it's it's, an, it's all Coast Guard. So, mas lalakas yung ating Coast Guard. Uh -huh. uh, hopefully, I, no? I, I, eh, I, I just remember money. Sa, money. Uh, Coast Guard in China. Yung money, I just remembered. Ano, nabanggit may mga radar. So, I just remembered na Canada nga pala ang tumulong para i-equip ang National Coast Watch Council ng mga radar system para mabantayan yung coastlines natin. So, uh, this National Maritime Council, this newly created Maritime Council, uh, was was created right after that that rather bold statement of the President. Diba? It followed where he yes. was asking help from our allies. Uh, he gave them our requirements, what we needed. For 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 to to uh, no, to to meet the challenges from China coming from China, so I guess by creating this National Maritime Council, ito yung pinakamagiging fulcrum ng lahat ng tulong na magagaling sa ibang bansa siguro para Correct, no? ano? Tama yung kasi yung yung alam ng Canada, uh, Patrick, ang binibigyan nila yung kanilang satellite uh, based na dark vessel program, right. no? Kasi sa dark vessel program Kadalasan ng barko, lahat siya may transponder eh, no? Para ma-track mo kung saan papunta, saan ang, ang rota. Eh kaya lang yung mga, yung mga Chinese ships, kadalasan pinapatay yung kanilang transponder. Military man yan, o fishing boat, o commercial. Pagka uh, militia nila, pinapatay yung transponder para hindi makita. Pero because of the Canadian satellite uh, ano, uh, uh, program, Nakikita mo ngayon lahat ng barkong gumagalaw dyan sa, sa West Philippine Sea. Kaya yan ay malaking tulong sa ating Coast Guard, sa ating Coast Watch yeah. so that uh, stations that para ma-track natin no? uh -huh. kung nasa ba itong mga barko na ito ng China. Okay, so that capacity came in through or to the National Coast Watch Council. Now, yes. itong National Maritime Council, mukhang kasi, Manny, mukhang maraming... Darating na ano siguro <laughs> na um, uh, equipment. Alay. Uh, uh, oh, uh, ayuda. Uh, oh, ayuda. <laughs> ayuda galing sa ating mga alay. Kaya kailangan mas, mas malaking grupo to involving 
more senior cabinet members, right? Yes, so, hindi, lang, hindi lang Coast Guard ngayon. Buong hindi, lahat, ano, lahat. Buong mm -hmm. na, no? Actually, may request pa yung Pilipinas eh. Sa US na escortan yung ating resupply mission sa Ayungin, no? Mami, uh, akala ko nireject natin yun. Oo, oh, Mami. Hindi kaya ko. May nalitin may, may, may balita na nireject daw natin yan. Tayo ba nag-offer o sila nag-offer? Parang offer daw, Mami. May request na ngayon eh. May request na ngayon. May request na ngayon kasi... Ah, may bago. Nasa US Congress na. Nasa US Congress na pag-uusapan nila kung pwede na pwedeng samahan ng US Navy yung ating mga barko para bantayan, no? So, Pero may debate pa sa US Congress kasi ayaw ng iba lalo sa House, no? Still get pulled in. Na makialam yung yung US, dahil sabi nila baka lalong gumulo. So, Bok, there's a new uh, formal uh, proposal or request from the Philippine government uh, to the U.S. government to escort our uh, Roro, Roro, Rore missions uh, to the West Philippine Sea. Is that correct? Yes, may, may ganong uh, proposal. At sila sabi ni Ambassador Romaldes sa U.S. na is on the table. No? Okay. Uh, palagay ko, napag-usapan niya nung nandito si... Sekretary mm, Blinken, okay. nung kausap na si Pangulong Marcos at si Sekretary Manalo. Mm, kasi yung nakarang narinig natin, eh, may offer. May offer daw. Na, na tinanggihan natin. Na, ang tanda ni Ami, oh. nireject natin. Oo, oh, tinanggihan daw <laughs> natin. Yun, yun din ang yun banggit sa atin. Yan ang natatanda ko, sabi ko, yabang natin, nireject natin. Oo, oh, yan, yan din yung banggit eh, ni, ano, ni, ni, ni Sekretary Malaya. Yan ang natatanda ko. ATG Malaya, Jonathan Malaya. It's pretty recent, hindi ba? That was a pretty recent interview na nireject nga daw natin. At uh, ano, uh, kaya pa naman daw natin. Ang meron tayo, may nag escort sa atin pa minsan-minsan, di ba, na aeroplano. US yata. O, oh, aeroplano. Aeroplano. Oh. Ang picture oh. thing. Oh. Sur surveillance oh. alaman yun eh. Oh, surveillance. Yan, no. So, manunod na sila. Madalas actually tayo <laughs> ma-escort pa ng mga, kahit sa counter-terrorism actually, sumasama ko minsan yung mga right. Amerikano eh. Oh. Kahit yung laban nung sa Abu Sayyaf, sumasama talaga sila nun. Right. Oh, for intelligence. Oh, yung kay, ano, kay sumama sa pano, nung nabas kay yung SAP, may US oh. doon. Oh, yun. Sila yung nagmamonitor, binibidyo. Oh. Ganon yun, no? Pero, Pero siguro yung sa... talagang, siguro, yabang na lang muna ng Pilipinas na, hindi, hindi lang kailangan niya. Pero talagang siguro, kailangan nilang uh, escort ng mga uh, Amerikano. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay. Abok, uh, we just have to take a break. Uh, you're watching Star Conference on One News. We need to pause for a quick break. We'll be right back. This is the Story Conference Group or the Story Con Group.
We've got the developing news and the stories behind the headlines. Welcome back to Storycon, the Story Conference. I'm Patrick Pius. And I'm Edling Gao. Also with us this Monday, Philippine Star Editor-in-Chief Ana Marie Pamintuan and One News Defense Editor, Esther Manuel Mugato. Tito Mani and uh, Tita, Tita Ami. Welcome Ami. back. <laughs> Hello, Tito N. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As we reported earlier, the PNP has a new police chief. Let's get more details yes. from News 5 correspondent Maricel Halili. Masay, so anong balita dyan? Bakit nagkaganon-ganon? Bakit biglang may in-appoint tapos biglang... <laughs> may OIC! Temporary, tapos biglang may in-appoint. Mag, Mag-OIC siya, pero linggo pa. Oo, oh, oh. ang oh. sapat naman noon. <laughs> Samba to Gloria pa. Um, Actually, nagkagulatan din kami kanina. Tito Patrick, Tito Manny, at saka Mok. And kay Ma'am Ami. Kanina kasi, nung pinigay sa amin yung program for the change of command ceremony, nakalagay pa doon yung pangalan ni Lieutenant General Peralta. Peralta. Si OIC. Yes, yeah. nakalagay pa doon yung OIC. Kasi di ba kung matatandaan natin, backstory, March 27, nag-issue ng memorandum yung Malacanang saying na ina-appoint nila sa Lieutenant General Peralta as officer in charge of PNP starting March 31. Kasi mm. hanggang March 31 lang yung yun. term ni uh, Akorda as PNP chief. So dapat OIC siya. And March 27 yan in-issue. March 27 is Holy Wednesday. Last week, yun din dapat yung mismong araw na gagawin yung change of command ng PNP. But for some reason, hindi natuloy. Inilipat siya ng Monday. Walang binigay na dahilan kung bakit. Basta inilabas na lang yung uh, memo na meron ng OIC. So, all along, akala natin, yung change of command kanina, ang uupo ay si Peralta mm-hmm. at OIC. Kasi nakalagay pa doon sa program kanina na siya yung mag Uh, mangunguna dun sa presentation of memento at saka magbibigay pa siya ng, ng uh, message after ng reading of designation order at saka assumption of OIC PNP. Mm-hmm. Yun pa yung nakalagay. And then, uh, kapansin-pansin kasi na before pa mag-start yung change uh, of command ceremony, nandun na sa stage si Marville. Katabi na siya ni Secretary Better Abalos. And then finally, na nag-start na yung program, in-announce na na siya na pala yung upo as the new chief PNP. So technically, parang ilang oras lang umupo as OIC si Peralta. Uh, pag ganyan ba, hindi uh, ko lang sinakakalama, Ma- Ma- Mogs, baka alam mo to. Pag yeah. ganyan bang OIC ka, eh, ikaw ba, eh, will you get the benefits of <laughs> PNP chief o, o hindi? Kasi OIC Wala. ka lang. <laughs> Wala. OIC Wala. ka lang eh. Wala yun. Wala. Wala kang power. Oh. Ang pamay mo na atal eh. Oh, ni, in, in, in terms of benefits sa salary ng tao. Pero in, in terms of benefits as you know, salary or compensation o ingon. Wala 'yon. Wala. 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 Ah, ta- tatanong ko lang kung kasi last year pa na na mission si Marbil na actually siya yung magiging kapalit ni Accord eh. Okay. So meron din mga kumakalat ngayon na ano, mga nagmamarite significant ba yung dati siyang commander ng Eastern Visayas na turf ni Speaker Martin Ayun. Umualdez. <laughs> Na, <laughs> yan nga yung ano, yan nga yung mga usap-usapan kanina sa kapo, Ma'am Ami. Kaya lang, hmm. of course, mga assumptions lang na, na ganun, hmm. posibleng ganun yung naging consideration. Kasi may mga lumalabas din, of course, na mga pangalan na kinonsider na, na PNP chief. Narinig natin yung pangalan ni NCRPO chief Nartates na na-consider. Hmm. Tapos ang usap-usapan pa kanina, eh, mukhang may mga... Um, importanting personalities na merong say kung sino yung, yung uh, dapat hmm. na umupo na mukhang naka-influensya kay President Marcos. So, hindi natin Kasi, masabing direkta kung may kinalaman yung assignment niya dun sa, sa Visayas uh, region. But of course, um, 
pagpili naman ng magiging hepe ng PNP, we all know na napaka-importante ng loyalty. So, hmm. hindi ko talaga totally ma-set aside yung possibility na baka may kinalaman nga yung assignment or yung pinagmula nilang probinsya. Okay, baka Kasi si, si Marbella and Bacorda, pareho silang magkaklase sila, di ba? Sa Mista yeah. yan sa PMA. Mista. And uh, Mista. Adap adapted, oh, adapted nila si, ano eh, di ba? Si Speaker Martin, yung class na yan ng PMA. Mm. Mm. Oh. Okay, Ma Manny, mm. Manny, baka ikaw may paliwanag ka. Is this a key factor in the appointments? Uh, saan siya galing? Saan siya dati naging uh, PNP Regional Director? <coughs> Or, or sino yung adapted nilang politiko sa class nila sa PMA? Is, should, should we even Lachan read into this? Lachan eh, nagmamatter. No? Pero as of this point, eh, purely speculation yan. No? Mm -hmm. Kasi yes. talagang hindi natin talaga malaman kung ano talaga ang reason bakit si Marvi lang naupo at uh, nawala si General Peralta. Pero ako eh, Uh, nalulungkot, ano? At uh, kawawa naman kung si Dervin Peralta had in-announced na OIC for a few hours. <laughs> diba? Dapat di na siya in na OIC. At uh, pinaupo na si Marbil. Dahil alam ko sa loob ng karami, matagal nang usap-usapan na si Marbil ang talagang gustong iupo hmm. ni uh, Pangulong Marcos. At yes. uh, libling may... Uh, Malaking factor yung kanyang pinanggalingang pwesto no, sa Tacloban bilang regional commander at uh, yung pagiging uh, kilala siya ni Speaker uh, Martin Romaldez. No? At yung nga, uh, adapted uh, member ng klase si Speaker. No? So yan ay eh, pwedeng mga factor pero lahat yan eh, lumalabas na spekulasyon unless na may mga confirm sa atin na Uh, talagang eh, talaga yung naging factor kaya naupo si Marvin. Okay. Pero alam mo sa karami, no, sa mga reporter, hindi nila gaanong kilala itong si Marvin. No? Pati si General Peralta, hindi nila gaanong kilala kasi uh, galing to sa mga probi probinsya. No? Uh, actually, si General Peralta galing sa Ilocos yan. <laughs> no? Pwede rin, pwede rin factor yung away ng mga kapatid. No? Yung si Ivy yes. at uh, si, si Presidente at si uh, Speaker. No? Pwede rin factor yun uh, sa pag-decide pag kung sinong magiging PNP chief. Pero lahat yan eh purely speculation. Okay. Okay. Bok, okay. ano? Meron pa tayo ano? isang uh, correspondent uh, we're pulling in uh, all the way from uh, Cebu City. Um, um, eh, teka, si Maricel pala, nandiyan pa pala. <laughs> Maricel, maraming salamat for joining us. Thank you, Maricel. Thank you, Maricel. News 5 correspondent Maricel Lili. Now, let's bring in uh, um, uh, ah, ang ating correspondent si uh, Dale Israel uh, from Cebu to talk about uh, ang mga kagarapan hmm. dyan sa Cebu, uh, ang ating Cebu desk. Dale Israel. Dale. Yes, uh, saka mainitong hapon, kanyang sa nandiyan sa Patrick, Ed, Manny, and Ami. Yes, uh, yes uh, si Deputy yes. Mayor Michael Rama has declared a water crisis for the entire city today with uh, the decline of water supply amid the continuous effects of the dry spell. So this announcement was made by the mayor during an interview with reporters this morning. And as of this time, Mayor Rama is supposed to be meeting with officials from the water utility, the Metro Cebu Water District, and some of the Cebu City Councilors. So uh, earlier, the Cebu City Council has also placed 28 mountain barangays of the city under a state of calamity. It is a resolution that unanimously approved by the legislators. So this means they can now access the calamity fund of each barangay. Uh, Cebu City has uh, 80 barangays, and half of them are mountain barangays. So, uh, City Councilor Doria Ganera said that the number of barangays that will be placed under a state of calamity may also increase further. This, uh, this morning, we visited the mountain barangays and to actually check on the situation there. And we saw that the rivers are almost dried up. Residents in the area said that more than 50% of the waters from the river are gone. And mm -hmm. uh, one resident told us also that the water is so scarce that they could no longer take a bath daily. 
and said they shower every three days and wash clothes once a week. Mm. And they buy their drinking water from refilling stations, which, which are very expensive for them. Or they wait for water rationing trucks, which do not come every day. So Rogelio, uh, the one we interviewed, was actually a farmer, but he stopped planting at this time because uh, surely his crops will not survive the drought. So he just tells peanuts at this time as a vendor. Okay, Dale, but, I understand that... Uh, yeah, yeah. By declaring a state of calamity, there are make a make a sunod na calamity fund coming mm -hmm. from the national government. Access and also, to calamity okay, um, but what we'd like to know, Dale, is uh, what measures uh, is the city of Cebu adopting to let's say conserve mm -hmm. water? Tiba pagganitong crisis, dapat ang unang approach yan bago humingi ng calamity fund eh, magkaroon ng water conservation measures. Uh, for example, bawal mo na magkarwas. May mga ganun bang measures ang, ang Cebu City, Dale? Yes. yes, there are no measures something like that na bawal magkarwas. But uh, what we uh, heard from Mayor Rama is that they have been preparing for the El Nino for this December. And uh, yeah, and, and then speaking of the funds, they said that there are at least 90 million that will be used to, to purchase equipment that uh, will be used, like for example, uh, like what we saw this morning at the at, at the mountain barangay, barangay Bonbon, is that uh, some of the uh, staff from the water utility are already installing this uh, water siphoning and filtration system, which which actually siphons dirty water from the river and filters it to become potable. This is a, a technology mm -hmm. uh, given by the Japanese government, and that's what we saw. That they are installing now. Okay. Okay. Dale, so. Dale, saan bang sources ng water ng Cebu? Saan yung pinakamalalaking sources sa ka? Pwede ba dyan yung groundwater? Kasi dito sa Metro Manila, Bawal. binabawal na eh, kasi nagkakaroon daw ng soil erosion. Yes, uh, uh, actually, the MCWD has uh, the, big, the bigger uh, supply of water from MCWD is uh, groundwater, only a few. Uh, percent are from uh, surface water, like for for the rivers. Um, so, so with 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 this uh, development with the drought, then the well, uh, the surface water would be would be uh, lesser even further. Okay, okay. Maraming salamat. Wala pang watershed area dyan sa Cebu, no malapit. There's a okay. uh, there's a watershed uh, like in Bohisan, which also we reported it last. Month that it's already uh, declining. Also, the Buisan watershed and the Hatlupan facility. There's also a watershed there, and uh, we saw the rivers are also drying up. Okay, that's all mm -hmm. the time we have for now. Uh, thank you, Dave Israel, the One News Cebu desk and editor of the Freeman. Salamat, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Dale. And thank you for joining Storycon, Philippine Philippine Star Editor in Chief Anna Marie Pamintuan, and One News Defense Editor Manny Mongato. So join us again tomorrow at 4 Thank p.m. You. Salamat. Join us again tomorrow at 4 p.m. for the Storycon. I'm Ed Lingao. I'm Patrick Pais. We are One News, all sides, all the time. This is the Story Conference Group or the Storycon Group.